Empress Qi's rise to power is truly astonishing. She was forced to leave her homeland to become a female tribute to the Yuan dynasty. She became a palace servant and eventually climbed the ranks to be empress. However, during the Ming dynasty, Empress Qi was blamed for the downfall of the Mongolian dynasty because of her corruption and extravagance. Empress Qi did betray her native country by invading her homeland. Her family prospered from Empress Qi's position and often abused their power. Regardless of whether Empress Qi deserves her negative reputation, it is clear that she made a massive impact on Chinese history. This is the story of the most hated empress in history. Empress Qi was born in Guriyo to Qi Jiao, a low-level commander that belonged to a minor noble family. However, being a daughter of a government official was nothing to be proud of. Instead, it was something to be worried about. Having suffered a devastating defeat during the Mongol invasions, Guriyo sued for peace and became a vassal kingdom of the Mongol Empire. As a vassal, Guriyo was forced to pay tributes to the Yuan dynasty. Other than the typical gold, silver, and fabrics, women were also a huge part of the tribute. Women who were sent as tributes often came from underprivileged families and minor aristocrats, who had no right to say no. As the daughter of a minor noble, 15-year-old Qi was among those women who were sent to the Mongol Empire. After arriving in the Mongol royal court, she became a maid who was in charge of serving tea to the emperor. For her beauty and cleverness, Qi had the emperor, Togan Tema, wrapped around her finger. She was promoted from a servant to an official royal concubine. The emperor spent a lot of time with Qi than with Danashiri, the emperor's primary empress. The emperor never liked Danashiri, and things only got worse when she tortured Lady Qi with a white-hot iron brander out of jealousy. Empress Tanashiri planned to get rid of Lady Qi, but political intrigue at court began to cause the empress's downfall. In 1335, two years after Lady Qi was made a concubine, a minister named Bayan began to achieve considerable power. He removed Empress Tanashiri's father from power and purged his relatives. Empress Tanashiri was confined under house arrest and was later executed by poison. With the position of empress vacant, the emperor intended to elevate Lady Qi as his empress. However, Bayan successfully persuaded the emperor to marry a Mongol girl of the Kongurad tribe. The new empress was Bayan Ku Tu. Official accounts depicted Empress Bayan as a retiring woman free from jealousy. She did not openly resent the Emperor and Lady Qi's relationship. In 1339, Lady Qi gave birth to a son named Ayushiradara. The Emperor was still not satisfied with Empress Bayan's position and wanted to raise Lady Qi's status. In 1340, Empress Bayan fell out of power. She still retained her title as empress, but was sent away from the palace. One month after Empress Bayan's downfall, Lady Qi was promoted to second imperial consort. As a result, Lady Qi reigned as empress in all but name. As the unofficial empress, Lady Qi established a special government agency where she wielded a wide-ranging authority regarding tax collection. This secured Lady Qi's finances. In 1356, she expanded her sources of income by investing in maritime trade. To further solidify her influence within the palace, Lady Qi garnered numerous supporters. She gave a significant number of Korean-born eunuchs positions within her special government agency. One of these men was Park Bulwa, who became her most trusted servant. Lady Qi also selected and installed many Korean palace women strengthening her network of loyal individuals within the palace hierarchy. Gradually, the emperor began to lose interest in state affairs and gave power to Lady Qi to run the state. Lady Qi became the unofficial monarch of China. It was said that she learned how to rule by reading women's books of filial piety and reading history books on past great Chinese empresses. However, not everyone was happy with Lady Qi's power in the Mongolian court. In 1348, a Chinese censor blamed Lady Qi of dikes, earthquakes, and the increase of bandits. 
he said that the only way to end these disasters would be for the emperor to reduce Lady Ki's position. On the other hand, Lady Ki used her power and money for philanthropic works. In 1358, when famine and disease ravaged the capital city of Daiju, Lady Ki took action. She instructed her officials to distribute porridge to the starving populace, demonstrating her commitment to alleviating their suffering. Furthermore, she used her personal funds to provide dignified burials for over 10,000 deceased individuals, and enlisted monks to perform funeral services for them, exemplifying her compassionate nature in the face of adversity. Lady Ki's family also enjoyed a wealth of privileges. Under the Yuan Empire, her father was posthumously made a king. Her mother was granted the honor of having visits from the Guriyo king and was granted official visits to the capital of Daiju. One of Lady Ki's older brothers, Ki Chiol, attained considerable authority over the Guriyo monarch. He also served as a manager in the Liroyang branch secretariat in 1553. Another brother was named Minister of the Left of the Liroyang Branch Secretariat as well as Manager of Governmental Affairs, and Grand Minister of Education. However, her family's promotion caused resentment in the Guriyo court. The Guriyo court charged her younger brother Ki Samman of abusing his influence and had him executed in 1351. Despite her younger brother's execution, King Gongmin still believed that Lady Ki's family could help Guriyo establish good relations with the Yuan Empire. He sent gifts to Lady Ki and promoted her brother Ki Chiol. However, King Gongmin was still disgusted with how Lady Ki's family abused their power. In 1356, King Gongmin led a purge against Lady Ki's family. He exterminated them and declared Guriyo to be independent of the Yuan Empire. The death of her family angered Lady Ki. She retaliated by naming a new Guriyo king and sent her son on a military expedition against Guriyo. This military expedition failed and Guriyo maintained its independence. In 1365, Empress Bayan died. Lady Ki was made Empress. However, Empress Ki was only officially Empress for three years when Zhu Yuan Zhong, the founder of the Ming Dynasty, rebelled against the Yuan dynasty. This forced Empress Qi, Togan Tema, and Ayushiridara to flee to their Mongol homelands. What happened afterwards is like a blank page. This is because the history of the Yuan ended with the imperial family's flight. Togan Tema died on 30 May, 1370 of dysentery. Ayushiridara was proclaimed ruler of the Great Yuan and remained Zhu Yuanzhang's enemy until his death in 1378. It is unclear if Empress Qi ever became the Empress Dowager. Her death remains a mystery. Although we do not know much about her later life, what is clear is that she was a strong and powerful leader. <laughs>